Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India on medical biomaterials, we will continue on the topic of polymers. As I said, polymers are widely used as a biomaterial. Polymers are made up of repeat units of the one single monomer or it could be multiple monomers, two monomers. So, uh, uh, there are wide range of polymers available which can be tuned for any uh, desired uh, application and with different properties. Okay, so, we will look a little bit on the structure of these uh, polymers also. Um, for example, look at this polyethylene terephthalate, it is polyester, it is originally um, invented for making fabrics. Okay, so, it is called a polyethylene terephthalate. So, it has got a um, terephthalic acid unit here, okay, then the ethylene glycol, that is how they are condensed, uh, terephthalic and ethylene glycol condensed as the repeat units. Um, it is called polyester, it is also called dacron. It is used in manufacturing vascular grafts, large diameter vascular grafts, 2 mm type. It is also involved in valves, patches, so many other applications. It is called polyester and the ester bond um, as you know can be degraded um, with the esterase type of enzymes. Look at this nylon 6 this is called nylon 6. Okay. Uh, when we put n, that means uh, there could be n could be a very large number. So, it is like this. So, it starts with caprolactam converted to nylon 6. It is used in stutures and um, these stutures are not de degradable. They are very, very strong. Um, nylon is used in applications where you read very high tensile strength. Um, so, here those days they used to use it as stutures, but then uh, and they do not degrade. So, nowadays they have switched on to other biodegradable material. So, in a polymer you are going to have repeat units uh, that means same unit gets repeated hundreds, thousands of times and depending upon the number of repeat units the molecular weight also changes. For example, polyester will have this particular repeat unit C double bond O. Okay, C double bond O, O. This is called the ester bond and of course, um, esterase type of enzymes can uh, degrade this bond. Polyamide, it will have C double bond O N H okay? and this, this is the repeat unit. So, it can have many of these actually. Okay? Uh, please note uh, um, the amide bond in the protein that also has got a C double bond O N H 2 or N H and some other functional group like uh, uh, aliphatic and so on. Okay? Polyamide protein. Polyurea, look at this. So, you have C double bond O in the middle of two nitrogen amines here. Polyurethanes, okay. these are very, very strong polymers, not degradable. Okay, we have CEO on this side, C double bond O and then we have nitrogen here. Polysiloxanes, look at this, um, SI, silicon is here, oxygen is here and you can have different groups. Cellulose, C, O, C and so on. So, these are the repeat units you will find in uh, some of these polymers, you know, it keeps on repeating many, many times. Okay, more of the structure. Uh, this is called polyparaphenylene okay, because you have the nitrogen here, NH paraphenylene, terephthalate. If you remember, this looks like you are this, right, terephthalate. Uh, here it is phenylene because you have the nitrogen, it is extremely strong, it is called Kevlar commercially and uh, they sometimes make a bulletproof uh, um, vests with this, they are extremely strong and they have very high tensile strength, you can make it into fibers. So, we can uh, make it um, uh, like ions and then uh, we can uh, um, spin it okay, to make fabrics out of this. So, that is called uh, polyparaphenylene terephthalate. Okay. So, this is the para groups, this is the terephthalate group and then phenylene nitrogen is there. Uh, polyethylene, polypropylene, uh, all these are very, uh, very ubiquitous. Um, polyolefins, polyethylene is very, very simple. C, 
H2 here, CH2 here keeps on repeating. So, depending upon the number of repeat units, the n number of small n, we can have low density polyethylene, high density polyethylene, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene like that you know. So, if you look at the molecular weight, low density around 10 power 3, um, high density uh, 10 power 5, ultra high molecular weight 10 power 6. So, these are used uh, somewhere sometimes in drain tubes, uh, these are used in knee uh, joints when they have in total knee replacement surgery to prevent metal on metal contact you have this. Okay? So, in the low density polyethylene sometimes uh, instead of being uh, a linear, you can also have side chains. That means, during polymerization you can have a lot of side chains coming in. So, obviously, um, it will not be very compact. Uh, so, the molecular weight is low, the density is also low here. So, as you can see, the density increases, tensile strength also increases from LDP to HDP to ultra high molecular weight polyethylene and they are very, very hydrophobic material because we have only carbon, we do not have anything else, we do not have oxygen, nitrogen. So, it is extremely hydrophobic type of material. Polypropylene, so there is a CH3 here, okay. that is why it is called polypropylene. Uh, density is low because the CH3 is a bulky group, so you cannot pack it up too much, but the tensile strength is also high. But So, polypropylene, um, there are different types of polypropylene where the CH3 uh, and next CH3 can be in the same direction or same side or in the opposite and so on. Okay? So, they are called uh, atactic, syndiotactic, isotactic depending upon how the consecutive CH3s are um, located. So, this is called polypropylene again this is also very highly hydrophobic because we have only carbons, we have nothing else, no oxygens or nitrogens or sulphurs. Uh, these polymers are used uh, quite a lot because they are very, very cheap, easy to fabricate, we can make it into different shapes and sizes. Okay, molded and so on actually. So, and they are very strong. So, they are used in many applications as well. But uh, remember, they are very hydrophobic. Um, so, obviously, there could be uh, biofilm formation, bacterial contamination, and so on. Polyacrylates. Okay. Uh, this is the general structure CH2C. Okay, there is a COOR. So, this is the ester part of it, and um, there is a R1 here. Okay, if R1 can be H or methyl or ethyl, R2 can be methyl. Uh, okay, so, we can have uh, methacrylate, okay, when we have methyl here, methacrylate, that is an ester. Um, if you have a methyl here, methyl methacrylate. Otherwise, we can have just methacrylate if R1 is H or we can have methyl uh, acrylate, but ethyl, ethyl methyl acrylate. So, we can have different types of uh, uh, polyacrylates um, by changing this R1 and R2 group. But uh, the most uh, common is polymethyl methacrylate. That means, you have a CH3 here and a CH3 here. Okay. Uh, it is used quite a lot in dental applications, maxiofacial applications, bone, cement, acrylate. Um, and then it has got fantastic uh, light transparency. Um, okay. So, it is used in many places where you need transparent uh, observations and PMMA has higher tensile strength than um, polymethacrylate. That means, when R1 is H, that is called a polymethacrylate. So, PMMA is the um, polymer which is uh, consumed a lot in biomedical applications, uh, maxiofacial surgeries, dental applications. So, it goes days back to a very long uh, time and it is easy to make um, the polymer Starting from the monomer, when we apply a UV, uh, the polymerization happens. So, it is very, very simple to make and we can have different types of uh, polyacrylates. Okay, next, uh, hydrogels. Hydrogels is uh, polyhydroxyethyl methyl methacrylate, HEMA, hydroxyethyl methacrylate. Okay. Uh, so, look at this structure here. Okay, so, we can have uh, uh, hydroxy, then we can have ethyl, then methacrylate, okay, this methacrylate and so on actually. Uh, they are extremely hydrophilic, they are hydrogel, that means the hydrogel is something which can take in lot of water, hydro is water, right. So, it can take in lot of water, they can swell a lot, 
So, it is used in soft contact lenses, they have got a good oxygen permeability. Um, so, uh, it is used in soft contact lenses, so person can wear it for a very long period of time. Whereas, if you look at uh, PMMA, uh, it is used uh, in hard contact lenses or because it has got very good transparency, um, but it does not take in as much uh, water as uh, this particular uh, HEMA is called polyhydroxyethyl methacrylate. Okay. So, hydrogels um, not only used in soft contact lenses, they are also used uh, in wound dressing, surface wound dressing, uh, we can even encapsulate uh, um, drugs and so on actually. Now, other polymers, these are some polymers which have been approved by the Food and Drug Administration USA, polylactic acid PLA. So, we have this type of structure, okay, lactic acid. So, how does it, uh, um, it is a biodegradable, is a FDA approved, but it is insoluble in water. Now, how is it made? Ring opening polymerization of a racemic mixture of L and D lactides to produce poly D uh, L lactic acid, but if I take only uh, L lactide, then I will get P L L A poly L lactic acid. Okay, okay. So uh, they are insoluble in water, and uh, so we can uh, tune their uh, uh, properties by either taking a D L uh, racemic mixture of uh, lactides or just L lactide and so on. Actually, P B A polyvinyl alcohol. It is a water soluble polymer, this is also approved by the um, FDA okay. and uh, it is also very hydrophilic. So, it is used in eye drops and also it is used in hard contact lenses solution as a lubricant. Okay. So, PVA is a very good lubricant uh, because it is water soluble, it is hydrophilic in nature. Okay. So, it is used in such applications. And sometimes uh, when I am mixing uh, a hydrophobic uh, polymer uh, with the uh, hydrophilic polymer, we use PVA uh, to enhance the mixing properties. Okay. PLGA, polylactic glycolic acid, polylactic. So, we can have different combinations of lactic and glycolic. Okay. So, the structure is like this. This is the lactic part of it. Okay. If you can see this, this is the lactic part of it and this is the glycolic part of it. Okay. It degrades by hydrolysis because we have the ester bond. It is also used quite a lot in uh, um, medical applications, grafts, sutures. Uh, so, nylon sutures uh, are not uh, degradable. So, af after the wound heals, surface wounds, the doctor has to uh, remove it, uh, pull it out. Whereas, PLGA type of sutures are biodegradable, so automatically they will get bioresorbed. They can be used in implants, prosthetic devices, surgical sealant, making nanoparticles and so on. So, PLGA uh, is also widely used and the beauty is we can uh, change or modify their biodegradable properties by modifying the lactic to glycolic acid. Okay. So, glycolic is more bi faster biodegradable than lactic, so we can tune that. Then is polycaprolactone polycaprolactone and this is also bi bi biodegradable polyester. So, how is it made? You take um, epsilon caprolactone with a catalyst like a tin, uh, we can make this polycaprolactone. This is also approved by FDA. It is a biodegradable, it is used in drug delivery device sutures. Okay. So, we can make a PCL based sutures. Remember, there is something called polycaprolactum. Okay. That is uh, almost like nylon, it is very, very strong, not degradable, but this polycaprolactone is de degradable, it is approved by FDA. So, do not confuse between lactum and lactone. Okay. Lactone is a biodegradable polymer. So, a lot of polymers. Then comes a PTFE, polytetrafluoroethylene, it is a very, so you can see fluoro, lot of fluoros here. Very crystalline, high density, low modulus, low friction coefficient. So, it is used quite a lot. It is very inert, so small diameter vascular graft. So, if I am looking at large diameter 2 mm, I may go for polyester. If I am looking at small diameter vascular grafts, I will go for 
PTFE. So, PTFE you used in vascular grafts, PTFE is used in BT shunts. So, um, this also has uh, quite a good uh, set of applications. Okay. So, we looked at a lot of structural features of different types of polymers used and of course, uh, um, PVC polyvinyl chloride is another polymer where we have uh, uh, one chlorine uh, th 3 H's okay, hi hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen one chlorine there. Okay. Um, so, polyvinyl chloride is also very inert um, it is used uh, for short duration application. So, maybe drain tubes and so on okay. and um, because uh, it is um, very inert and uh, it is not used for uh, many other uh, purposes especially if you are looking at uh, um, okay, tissue engineering type of application. So, what are the applications? I have been telling PMMA, good light transparency. So, it can be used for hard contact lenses, intraocular lenses, it is very stable. HEMA, hydroxy, ethyl, methyl, acrylate, soft contact lenses, polyethylene, high density polyethylene, tough, low cost, tubing, drain, catheters, acetabular components for artificial hips, knee joints, polyvinyl chloride, it is hard and brittle, it becomes flexible by adding plasticizer. So, it is used in tubing for blood transfusion, feeding dialysis. So, it is not used for long applications because the plasticizers present may come out, PLGA absorbable, resorbable surgical sutures, polyurethanes, okay, pacemakers, vascular grafts, heart assist balloon pumps, it is almost like rubber, it is very flexible. Okay, so, polyurethane is also finding quite a lot of applications. So, polymers, the ease of manufacturability to produce various shapes tailorable properties. I can change, take, I take PLGA, I can um, change the amount of lactic to glycolic, I get different properties, reasonable cost. It, we can make it in different mechanical and physical properties. Okay. We can make it in different shapes. Uh, later on, I am going to do some experiments and show you. Uh, disadvantages, leachable, there could be some monomer, like for example, acrylic acid present in PMMA may leach out, which could be toxic. Um, for example, um, any other monomers or lichens. Uh, for example, if you take uh, PVC, the plasticizers like phthalates are added to make it soft and flexible, that may leach out over a long period of time. Wear and break down. So, they can wear out, they can also break down, there could be some oxidation uh, reaction or hydrolysis. Difficult to sterilize. So, if, uh, if I use for example, steam sterilization, some polymers may absorb moisture. Okay, if I so if I use some chemical ethanol or something, some there could be some reactions in some cases. So we need to be very careful. Uh, what type of sterilization method uh, do I um, follow when I have a polymeric biomaterial? Okay. Um, so some proper other problems. Polyethylene it absorbs lipids, LDPE. It's so tensile strength becomes poor. High density ones are inert. So, no deterioration occurs. Polypropylene, generally no deterioration. Polyvinyl chloride, rich, uh, tissue that is rigid ones, tissue reaction, the plasticizers like phthalate present may leach out, material may can become brittle. Polyethylene terephthalate, okay, so hydrolysis because they have ester bond, hydrolysis, so strength can come down. Polyamide, nylon, they can absorb water, irritate tissue, lose tensile strength. Silicon rubbers, no reaction, but and very little deterioration. PTFE solid specimens are inert, if it is fragmented into pieces it can cause irritation. Polymethyl methacrylate, rigid form, crazing, abrasion, loss of strength, heat sterilization. Okay. Uh, when I heat it for, for sterilization, it lose strength. Cement, high heat, heat generation, okay, when you make the polymer, unreacted monomers may leach out and damage tissues. So, each polymer has some problems or the other that is happening. Okay. Okay, let us look at uh, how they are synthesized. There are two ways, one is called the addition, another is called the condensation. Okay. In condensation is called also called step wise. So, we can step wise grow the uh, polymer. Uh, addition means we take um, two units and add them. Okay. So, polymers uh, you can make uh, like this with general structure like this. You know. So, how do we do it? Uh, in the addition, radicals are formed initially, you uh, generally you add some free radical initiators 
that is RO dot means it is a radical. Now, this radical reacts with this portion of this, it produces the activated monomer. Now, this keeps on growing, this is called propagation. So, law grows, 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 that is why it is called a stepwise addition, grows, 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 grows and then you terminate it, um, you add some terminating agent or radical scavenging agent. So, the polymerization stops and the uh, chain growth stops, that is called addition polymerization. So, here generally it is through radical. So, you had a radical initiator which uh, uh, produces radical of the monomer and which keeps adding, adding, adding step wise. Okay. Uh, so, the polymer grows and when there is a radical scavenger, um, the radical stop, so the polymerization gets terminated, this is called addition polymerization. The next one condensation, okay. so we add uh, two units get condensed together and generally you throw out water or methanol which is removed by using vacuum, okay. that is how polyesters are produced like I said terethalic acid and ethylene glycol. So, you get uh, when you use terethalic acid, you get um, okay, methanol that is produced. Similarly, polyamides, proteins. So, all these are called condensation polymerization. Okay. Uh, how when you have functional groups on both sides, you can have condensation. Say for example, COOH is a functional group OH. So, we can keep an adding one unit with another unit and so on. So, poly uh, monomers which have functional groups on both sides can be done through this condensation polymerization. Whereas, in the other one step wise, you need to generate radicals which keep on adding um, and the chain growth takes place. Okay. So, two basic methods by which most of the polymerization reactions happen will not go too much into it, but uh, it is good to know. So, we can have different type of architecture, linear, branched like low density polyethylene starts getting branched, that is why the densities are low, okay. whereas high density will have less branch. So, they get packing better, so the densities are high. Cross linked, so we have one unit, one unit, one branch chain, they are all cross linked like this. Okay. Sometimes we add a cross linking agent. Network. So, we can have polymerization taking place like a network, dendrimers they call it, okay, star polymers, there are so many types which are um, in that fashion, okay, the network type of polymer. So, different types of structures are possible and they all have different uh, uh, melting points, different uh, uh, phase change temperature and so on actually, okay, the properties also change because of uh, these architectural features. And uh, in the monomer arrangement, say suppose I have one unit, okay, another, another, this is a homopolymer. Copolymer is when I have more than one uh, monomer A, B. So, I can have random copolymer, alternating copolymer as you can see, A, B, A, B, A, B, this is random or block copolymer A, 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 B, 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 then again A, A. So, each of this will have different set of properties, properties change dramatically whether it is block or whether it is random. Okay. So, and it is yeah, it's possible to tune their reaction so that uh, we can get uh, either random or alternating or block copolymer. Of course, in homopolymer you will always have A, A, A. <coughs> of course, you may have branches like uh, polyethylene LDPE, but uh, this type of monomer arrangements will happen only when you have more than one monomer. Okay. Um, there is something called toxicity that is the arrangement of substituents around the extended polymer. For example, you take uh, polypropylene, okay, so there is a CH3 there, right, that the pendant. So, the CH3 of one and the CH3 of the next uh, repeat unit, if they are all in the same side, that is called isotactic, same orientation. Okay. If they are alternating, they can be syndiotactic. And if they are in the random fashion, you can be attacked. Okay. Uh, this happens especially when you have this type of uh, extended functional groups or pendant groups. Okay. For example, uh, let us look at this. Okay. Let us look at this uh, yeah, PVA. Okay. They all 
all the, mm, the PV, uh, OH of the next, next, they all could be in the same direction or they could be alternating or they could be in a very random fashion. Same thing with the polypropylene, uh, look at this, CH3 of the next could be in the same direction and so on or they could be in the alternating or they could be in the random. So, these uh, are typical examples. Um, so, we can have all in the same direction isotactic, alternating syndiotactic and this could be atactic. Okay. So, polyvinyl alcohol, the OH groups or polypropylene, the CH3 groups. Okay. So, all in the same direction. So, the, again the properties change dramatically depending upon how the tacticity look like. Okay. So, you can see we, um, that is why polymers are become very, very useful in bio uh, material applications. Um, there are so many variations that are possible. The arrangement of the monomers, the three dimensional feature which gives you this tacticity. So, all these that is the arrangement of the substituents. So, all these make a lot of difference in their physical chemical property. Uh, polymers also have uh, some crystallinity, they could be amorphous or semi crystalline, they can never be completely crystalline unlike your metals. Okay. So, they will be amorphous uh, semi crystalline, so there could be some amorphous region, some crystalline region. So, if there is degradation, the amorphous region may get degraded. Um, okay. Crystallization enhanced by small side groups and chain. Atactic polymers are always amorphous. Okay, as you can see and they cannot pack well, hence they are always amorphous. Isotactic may crystallize if conditions are favorable. Okay. Polymethyl methacrylate, polystyrene, they are all amorphous polymers. Polyethylene, polyethylene triethylate, that is the polyesters, they can have crystalline properties. Okay. Um, polymers have two types of molecular, in fact, uh, they can also have um, three types of molecular weights. Mostly one is called the number average molecular weight, it is represented as M n, other one is called the weight average molecular weight. Number of average molecular weight, total weight of all chains divided by number of chains, N i M i, that means uh, some chains have certain molecular weight, some chains have another molecular weight. So, you multiply and sum it up divided by number of chains that gives you the number. Okay. Uh, weight average molecular weight, that means we do not look at the number, we look at the weight uh, of chains uh, which have certain molecular weight. Okay. So, W i m i divided by W i, understand. So, we here we look at number of chains which have certain molecular weight, here we look at num the weight of chains which have certain molecular weight and uh, number average is always less than weight average. So, so look at this, suppose you have because polymers will have a mixture of molecular weights, there, that is mixture of uh, um, length. Okay. There could be some chain length smaller, some chain length longer, some of them very long. Uh, so, it will theoretically sort of follow um, not exactly a Gaussian distribution, but this sort of distribution. So, uh, this will be the number average, the weight average. So, weight average will always be larger than the number average. Um, so, if you divide weight by n, number av weight average by number average, that is called polydispersity. That means, how dispersed the system is, um, it can be 1.2 or 1.3 and so on, because weight average is always larger than the number average. Uh, lower the molecular weight, lower the transition temperature, viscosity and mechanical properties. Okay. Um, so, lower the molecular weight. So, small molecular weight polymers will have a, a lower viscosity, lower mechanical properties. I said there is third molecular weight that is called viscosity average molecular weight that is based on viscosity of different uh, uh, chain lengths. We will not go into that. So, generally everybody follows number average, weight average. Number average tells you the number of uh, um, chain which have certain molecular weight. Here the weight uh, weight of chains which have this molecular weight. Okay. That is how it is calculated and I said weight average is always larger than number average. If you divide this m w by m n, we get a term called polydispersity that is generally 1.2 or 1.3 or 1.4 and so on actually. Then there is something called the degree of polymerization. Okay. 
that is number of repeating units, number average molecular weight divided by molecular weight of the repeating unit that is called the degree of polymerization. This is obvious, right? Um, so, one repeating unit this total molecular weight. So, if I divide this by this, it will tell you how many these units are there, that is why it is called degree of polymerization. Uh, as I said polydispersity or heterogeneity uh, that is MW by MN okay, sorry, uh, measures the polydispersivity, heterogeneity of sizes, okay. natural polymers are monodispersed, synthetic polymers are mostly polydispersed. Okay. Mechanical properties we have the strength, uh, stress required to break the sample, um, we have studied uh, long time back tensile, compression, flexural, torsional impact. Okay. Um, when you have linear, lower than branch cross link network. So, when you cross link, uh, they will have a higher strength. Okay. When there are network, they will have much higher mechanical properties. So, what are the factors which affect strength? The molecular weight, cross linking, if they are very highly cross linked, they are going to be very strong and tough. Crystallinity, if they are crystalline, then you have certain uh, better mechanical properties as against very amorphous. So, molecular weight, tensile strength increases, okay. increase in molecular weight, increase in tensile strength. Uh, percentage elongation to break that is the ultimate elongation, uh, originally I talked about thermoplastic, thermoset, right. So, elongation to break tells you about the ductility, percentage change in the length of the material before fracture. So, if you keep on increasing the length by pulling, 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 it reaches certain length and then it breaks. Okay. That is the elongation to break, it is a measure of ductility. So, thermoplastic greater than 100, thermoset less than 5 because thermoset is very, very rigid, it breaks. Okay. Young's modulus, this you know long time back we studied tensile strength by, sorry tensile stress by strain, okay. it gives you a stiffness of the material. So, polymers also will have uh, Young's modulus, but of course, they are much lesser than metals like stainless steel. Okay. Toughness, that is the energy absorbed by the material before it breaks. Brittle polymers, high Young's modulus, okay, like your even like your ceramic, uh, elastomers, low Young's modulus, um, okay. ductile materials will have like this. Okay. So, you have brittle polymers, ductile material, Elastomers. This is a stress strain diagram. Okay, the slope, as you know, uh, in the elastic region is called the Young's modulus. You remember all these, right? Long time back. So the area under the curve gives you an idea about the toughness. Okay, so these elastomers, the brittle material, ductile material. That is toughness. Okay, before it breaks, right? From elastic to plastic region. Viscoelasticity. Elasticity. We again defined it long time back. Okay, we can have a elastic and the viscous. The elastic material deforms in proportional to the stress. Okay, so, for example, um, returns to its original state when the stress is released. Okay, so, I give uh, at time uh, certain stress, so the strain is here, until the stress is maintained strain is here, as soon as the stress is released it comes down. Whereas, viscous material Okay, it takes longer for it to reach that value. And like, sorry, viscoelastic material it slowly reaches and then it comes down, but it never comes down and reaches the. That's called the visco. Uh, elastic material deforms in proportional to the applied stress and returns to its original state. Viscous fluid deforms permanently by an applied stress and continues to deform if stressed again. Polymers have both elastic and plastic depending upon temperature and strain rate. At low temperature, high strain rate, elastic behavior is observed and at high temperature, low strain rate, viscous behavior is observed. So, we will see the viscoelastic type of nature of polymers. Uh, there is something called thermal properties. Okay. Polymers have this glassy state, rubbery state. Um, and also the glass transition temperature. We will talk about uh, all these uh, in the next class. Okay? Thank you very much.